So last night was Dynamite. I mean, if you want the full review of the show, it will be Lance and I on the Brian and Vinny show tonight because Vinny is unavailable. So Lance and I are going to run down the full recap. Wait a second, Brian, but what if I want to read a recap of it? Well, you can go to WrestlingObserver.com right now where my report, subscribers only, full report of this show is up. Much like all of the reports I do. Raw, SmackDown, Collision, PLEs, pay-per-views, the whole nine yards. So uh, you can check that out right now at WrestlingObserver.com. And I should note that the very first thing that I wrote was the show drew 4,000. But that apparently was wrong. Uh, apparently, Russell ticks. There was an area that was curtained off or something. The actual number was uh, 3,200. So uh, it's still better than when they were doing like 2,000. But I think actually most dynamites have been, you know, 25, 3,000 around there. So it was it was about what it's been doing. And the issue was the building was absolutely gigantic because you know people were sending me photos of how empty it was. And I was like, they, they they didn't do a terrible crowd. But when you have a building the size of this building and there's 3,200 people, it looks like it's completely empty. What was it, like 18,000 for concerts or something like Which that? Which actually was uh, one of the tricks that Paul Heyman used to do. I mean, he wasn't going to sell, you know, 5,000 tickets. So you run a 1,800-seat building and uh, you have people hanging from the rafters. It looks yeah. like the hottest game in town. You take those same 1,800 people, put them in a 10,000-seat building... It's like this place is cold. So smaller yeah, was, buildings. Yeah, it was the thing with ROH at the uh, DuBurns Arena when they were there, you know. And then, again, you couldn't do TV all the time in a in a bigger building like at UMBC or at a Balt- certainly not at a Baltimore arena. And that's, that's what it feels like AEW does every time out. So the uh, two hot matches on the show, for those of you that love bangers, uh, Will Ospreay versus Shibata in the opener. And uh, in the main event as well, which was a number one contenders match. They they flat out said it this week. Takeshita versus Swerve. And uh, I'm not going to talk a lot about rankings. I just want to bring up. They suck. That, you know, they, they announced the rankings at the end of January. Right? Yeah. And then they randomly announced a second set of rankings in like the middle of February. Mm -hmm. And then they just totally dropped them to the point where we said they're gone. They're not doing them anymore. So it was like six weeks. And then they randomly announced we'd have new rankings out at the end of the show on Wednesday. And my point in all of this is, you guys realize that during that six-month period where they didn't mention the rankings and they didn't have rankings, I mean, I seem to remember things were going along just fine. Right? I didn't have a problem with anything. No. So then on this show, the reason I bring up the rankings is, uh, you know, this show had a number one contenders match with Sky, Chris Statlander, Willow, and Anna Jay, with the winner getting a championship match at the pay-per-view. And then they had a uh, number one contenders match in the main event with Takeshita and Swerve. And I thought, great. (laughs) Fine. You, You got contenders? They're having a number one contenders match? Like, what the hell do we need rankings for? Well, now we have rankings. So I was fine without them, but they're back. So is are they calling them monthly? Are they doing it like Pro Wrestling Illustrated now, where only once a month they're going to talk about ratings? I and, think and they have new and... rankings. I think the idea is they have new rankings at the end of every month, but they didn't do that. They had them at the end of January, then the middle of February, and then the end of March. But I think they're supposed to come out at the end of every month. Now, everybody listening to this is going to have their own theory, their own head cannon, as they call it. Uh-huh. But we actually don't have an answer to these questions. You can make up answers if you want, but we don't have answers. You know what's not canon and what has been proven time and time again, anytime rankings or ratings, however you want to call it, have been used in pro wrestling on TV shows from some of the best minds in the business who have tried it. They have never worked. They don't work. People don't care. Period. Now, the uh, the number one contenders matches ended up being Sky Blue, Chris Statlander, Willow Nightingale, Anna J. Mercedes was on commentary. Oh, my God. Well, Can you I'm find a way to make that. someone less of a star in one night than to put Mercedes on commentary? I mean, she sat there, and for the first half of commentary, she just said, Oh, wow. 
Huh? And then they tried to ask her a question to get some, like, something out of her, and then she really didn't have any answers. And they did have a stare down with her and Willow. And then Willow ended up pinning Anna with the doctor bomb. And so, you know, Dave was baffled. I have no idea why. It is so absolutely clear where this is going. And that is, we're going to have to wait and wait and wait and wait and wait for Mercedes to actually have a match. Because that's what they do. And first, Willow Nightingale is going to win the TBS title at Dynasty. And then we're going to build to Mercedes and Willow Nightingale for the title. And obviously, Mercedes was supposed to beat Willow when they had their match for the New Japan women's title, IWGP women's title. But Mercedes got hurt, and she put over Willow. So Willow got the title. So now they're going to do Mercedes beats Willow, gets her win back, and gets the title from Willow that she was supposed to get in that first match. Now, why, Brian, did you bring up the rankings again? Why? Well, I brought it up because now that we have rankings again, for those of you that are wondering what they're going to do with Mercedes, I think it's clear Mercedes has to beat a bunch of nobodies on television to become ranked number one by double or nothing. That's not what I would do, but that's what they're going to do, I think. So, uh, yes, I believe Willow and Mercedes for the title will take place. I mean, I guess they could hold it off until Wembley. I mean, no. they could. Like, they but could. I would presume Jesus. this would be a short-term title change with Willow winning at Dynasty and losing at Double or Nothing. I uh, just, she's got, she's like Sting. You know, people go and they see her, and other people can't understand why people like Sasha Banks, Mercedes Monet so much, but she's got a huge fan base. One of the things she's not great at are her interviews, and people that do like her do like some of her interviews, but for the most part, you don't stick her on commentary, you don't stick her on play-by-play or color, because... Again, she's already a known entity that way. It was a, it was like a WWE segment in that they put somebody on commentary almost just to do it, to watch the match, to get the facial reactions. And I'm okay with that, but it was, I don't know. It's just learn from this. And also having her out there for a long time too, I don't, much like a sting, isn't the best way to go. So her hooking up with Willow sooner rather than later, I like a lot because Again, she provides some things that Mercedes doesn't. Now, here's another very interesting thing about AEW. And that is the top women's title feud, if you presume that Mercedes being involved makes this a top women's title. Some of you would say that actually the top women's title is Tony. Whatever. But one of the top, because there are multiple women's belts, one of the top women's feud and the top men's feud, both of these. Did you hear, by the way, the Sami Zayn inter- uh, the Sami Zayn interview the other day, where he was talking about that match that he had with uh, with Gunther? Yes, or with Chad Gable. With Chad Gable, the, yeah, uh, the, yeah, the deal. So he, uh, you know, he said he apparently he was on a plane with Booker T, and they were discussing this, and then Booker went and talked about it publicly in his podcast, and then Sammy had to explain himself. And, you know, Sammy basically said, you know, uh, these are not his exact words because I'm, but he he was kind of, he was a little let down by the crowd reaction. And he noted that, you know, it's a big win. I'm going to WrestleMania. I'm very excited about that and everything. But it was a split crowd because a lot of the fans thought that Chad deserved this. Yeah. Okay. Now, now why do I bring that up? Why do I bring that up? Because... I will uh, I will put on my flak jacket. I'm sure I'm going to get it. But if you watched the show last night, Willow Nightingale got a way bigger pop than Mercedes did. Willow is beloved by these fans. Mercedes is supposed to be one of the top women babyfaces. And they are going to be doing a feud. And you've got two babyfaces... And I know that AEW has done this many times, but, you know, you always run a risk when you do that, that one of the two, it's going to be a Sami Zayn situation. 
This is supposed to be the big crowning of Mercedes Monet beating Willow for the title, but I don't know. She's going against the most beloved baby face in the company and someone who the fans see as homegrown. So also, what's the uh, what was the main event? Number one contenders match. To catch and swerve. This freaking match was awesome, by the way. If you've not seen this match, amazing. So Swerve won, obviously. It is Swerve and Samoa Joe at uh, at the Dynasty show. I don't know for sure, but I, I presume that Swerve is winning the title from Samoa Joe. It's time. So Swerve is going to be this uh, big-time babyface as champion, and I think we all know that Will Ospreay's crowning as champion is very likely to be happening at Wembley. Which means at Wembley, it's going to be Swerve's house against Will Ospreay. Which again, you know, you're probably going to get Swerve booed like crazy out of the building in Wembley. But, I mean, it's just well, interesting he may, that... He may, he may not have that belt by then, though. Because you can belt him up, have him in a few, then have him lose it. But uh, that's just, that's not what they do. I mean, you could do that, but... It's just not what they do. Well, they a lot of what they do is not right. <laughs> and, you know, you don't have to do Mercedes and Willow. Maybe in Mercedes' mind you have to, but you don't. I think you need Chris Statlander to turn on both of them first because, again, I think, again, like I said before, the alliance of Sasha and Willow or Mercedes and Willow together is a lot better for Mercedes. It, it really will be. And Willow could obviously use to, you know, to be around Mercedes and some of that star power or however you want the trade-off to be, but to have them have to have a match, even if it's two baby faces that are going to be cheered, I mean, it just does not have to happen anytime soon. Nobody is pining for the match of, oh my God, we didn't get the full match. We should have saw it in New Japan Strong. No AEW fan, no wrestling fan cares about that. So then we had uh, more matches in the tournament. We had uh, the best friends beating the Kingdom, which was a very good match. Finish was great. And Does that mean they're now number one contenders to the ROH tag titles? Well, Young Bucks beat Private Party, and so it's Young Bucks versus the best friends in a tournament match to get a shot uh, to get the AW tag titles because they've been stripped. And, uh, man, Young Bucks, ROH ones. Young Bucks and Private Party, I mean... That was a really fun match, but uh, Nick Jackson was like, he's absolutely unbelievable. He does the craziest stuff, and he damn near killed himself on a BTE trigger. Of all moves, he grabs them, they go for the kick, and literally I watched it a dozen times because I was petrified. I thought he, I thought he broke his leg or tore out his knee or something. He literally just slipped. Like, there was ice in the ring. He didn't trip on anything. He didn't do anything wrong. He just brought his foot back, whoop, zipped out from underneath him. He almost killed himself on a BTE trigger. But it was a very good match. They won. And yes, uh, it'll be Young Bucks against Best Friends in the tournament next week. What was a unique hairstyle worn by men in the 60s? Pompadour. Mop and conk. Whatever what? that is. I beg your pardon? Excuse Mop me? And Cock and, and pump. Conk. Say that yeah, one more time. Nobody else talk. Pop and conk? Yeah. Are you sure, Granny? <laughs> Read it again. Mev O P Mop. Comma. Conk. Mop conk. Mop conk? Conk. C O N K. Okay. Look it up. Okay. All right. Mop conk. Mop conk. That's two different things. I know. <laughs> God damn it. Duh. <laughs> Why is she mad at us? Because <laughs> we're idiots. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.